Okay, so here it is another hour or so later. A couple hours later, actually, from the last video. And I've got some exciting news updates. Some things to talk about regarding safety. I learned an interesting thing about my retardo meter out there. The, uh, I've been fighting my lab radar. And I talked in an earlier video that uh, something about the fact that I've heard that it reads off bullet glints. And that didn't make any sense to me. I came in, I've been shooting and shooting, I've been shooting the last two days. I came in off the last video episode and uh, was talking about the different powders and the fact I've been fighting extreme spread. And I went back out to start the next shooting sequence and it was pitch dark out there. So I said, you know what? The bullet glint thing makes no sense to me. This Doppler radar, Labrador, can't be dependent on sunlight. So I went inside, I understand my machine a little bit better now, and I found some settings and I fiddled around and I dropped the velocities down to the thousand foot range. Bottom line is I got the thing working. So I was wrong about the lab radar. I got one of the first ones that showed up at a sporting goods store 10 years ago and the guy said, this is blah blah blah, it's a Gen 1 1 1 1. Uh, very first. And uh, doesn't have any tricks, doesn't have any whistles, doesn't have any remote sensors, doesn't hook to my phone, doesn't anything. I just found a 2 amp power supply, plugged it in, and I just go use it. I hate the fact that it's got a billion shots in it, and I don't know how to erase it, and I don't know how to... It's not very intuitive. It's I still call it my piece of junk. But anyway, I got it working. I have been fighting extreme spread with 4895. Now, I fought extreme spread with 4895 before. I don't like 4895, and I don't know why. So I was switching to Varget. Didn't solve the extreme spread issue, and my groups are still down on the target, and they look like dung. But I started noticing that with 100 feet per second of extreme spread, I'm getting groups that are this tall. I need to get out of here, go up on my... Unfortunately, I don't have a computer program down here with ballistics on it. It's up in my laptop. I'm going to state before I go check, and I realize this could be a setup, but I'm going to state that... It's almost an inch per 25 feet per second at 100 yards. Just throwing that out there. I got groups. This last group that I shot, well, I need to back up. Some interesting things happened. That's why I need to talk to you. Some safety things. First thing that happened when I went out there and hit the Varga is I got a click boom. And I'm thinking uh, I haven't popped a primer, nothing inside the bowl. Trigger screwing up. I have pulled a few bullets. I got powder all over everywhere. I'm going, going, going. I've blown it out, but maybe I get some powder in the trigger. Savage, don't know anything about their triggers. Next one didn't go. And the bullet was lodged pretty good in the barrel. So I pulled it apart. This one, the primer had fired, but it didn't fire the powder. So I had to tear all those down. And I was careful. I showed you last video how I beat the primers out with a hammer. Well, I went to a... I beat them out with this so that it acted very slowly. And uh, I was safe about it. And I bashed the two live primers out with this hammer. And it was all good. But the Varget, even though it was in the right burn range... The ES was still retarded, like 65, 70 feet per second. I wrote on here in my final analysis, I don't know if you're going to be able to read this, 44 grains of Varget, high ES, group 2 inches plus tall. Ugly. Up here we got tall, we got... T there's uh, The groups are all tall. So I said, you know what, screw it. I'm going to go to H322 and just drop right down out of the window because I'm going to get something that's burning hot enough because the shotgun powders I'm telling you, they shot well 
down in the seven, eight hundred foot per second range, these are all. I'm shooting a bone stock savage. Um, I haven't done, and it's hard to hold. It's torquing like a mother. I actually built up some sandbags that I should show you. I took shot bags and I filled them with about a cup of sand. And I'm shooting this guy right here. There's the fore end. In a three inch wide tall ear bag. And I drop it into the bags and it's got a big gap on one side. And then I dump all the sand to one end of this sandbag that I've got and I poke it down in and then I stand it up and I let the sand dribble down, trickle down and fill in the gap on this side. So I'm getting, uh, but the gun's torquing, I'm getting some side to side. Um, that's neither here nor there. I'm, I, I feel I'm shooting under an inch, but I'm not getting, I'm getting vertical like crazy, just a little bit of side to side. So I decided bag it, I'm dropping all the way down to H322. And changed out primers. I went through. I'm not going to start naming primers. But after that debacle with the primers, I dropped to H322. And uh, I decided to try some with the same primer. Click, no boom. Pulled that one, and the primer had a pretty good ding in the back. Opened it up, no powder burn. So, well, now this is a totally different problem. Okay, I I'm going to share with you what I did on those. Actually, I'm going to name a name because I don't even think the primer company exists anymore. I switched from what I was using to an old box of Wolf primers. And I opened it up and there was an open box in there and a bunch of primers taped to a piece of plastic. I used these primers that had been laying in there stuck to tape for a while. First one that I put in didn't go off different kind and this is the fantastic thing about hand loading and this is why sometimes I wonder whether most people should even be loading. I got a click first I got a click boom with X primer and Vargit. Then I got a click no boom stuck the bullet into the barrel opened it up wad of gummy partially ignited nothing ignited hmm weird not weird I've had this happen before Certain primer admixtures are simply not compatible with certain powders. That's the safety lesson of the day. I've told this story before about one time a long time ago. I ran out of Winchester primers. It was Thanksgiving Day. We're out shooting. I went in and loaded up a few hundred rounds using federal primers. This is shotgun. I have a friend who is very fast on the shotgun. Likes to not wear safety glasses. I'm going to add it in just to make this a, a lesson again. Temperature got down below 50. It was 70 degrees. Everything was fine. Temperature started to fall and all of a sudden somebody got a click boom. I said, hey guys, careful because we had had to stop, took a break. Now, this is in my house where I had outdoor floodlights and we could shoot all night if we wanted. So we turned on the lights, it's getting darker, the temperature's going down. Let's just say somewhere around 50 degrees, we're shooting trap. We got a click boom. I said, watch it, guys. We need to find out. A little while later, somebody else got a click boom. And I said, okay, we might need to wrap. But, hey, we're having fun. We're busting birds. And a few minutes later, I hear a click splatter noise. And I look over, and this cloak, he's my brother-in-law, I guess. Um... Wearing safety glasses, everything was safe, turned, face all black, looked at me and said, uh, I guess this is why we wear safety glasses, hey. He was fast enough that he had pulled the trigger, gun came open. It's here, of course. Ejecting out this side, the shell was out almost a foot away from the gun when it popped. And I say black, it's not like it, but, but the point is he had smudges on his face, nobody got hurt. Uh, a shot shell exploding a foot from your eye is not that big a deal as long as you have safety glasses on. So, click, we stopped. I called Federal all in a tizzy and they said, name your load. That's not a list. Of, evidently you didn't use a listed load and I, I hesitate to do this from memory, but I believe it was 800X and Federal shotgun primers and he gave me a long treatise on how not all primers ignite all powders, period. 
an R mix. He said, if you'll never find that load in a manual. He pulls a thing out of his desk and he said, here it is right here. He has a list of non-compatible powders with Federal 209s. And it was right there on the list. And I said, wow, I learned something valuable. You don't just switch primers. He was a very nice guy. I'm not saying this to say anything bad about Federal. It's a known fact that across the spectrum, and the way it manifests itself in bench rest is anecdotally people say, oh man, most people don't shoot over a chronograph. Most people just go out and shoot. And I've had countless people talk about, believe in their souls that changing primers has made their gun shoot. And I'm here to tell you that it's true because it changes ignition curves and it has to do with this ES that I'm fighting. And I'm coming to grips with just how important extreme spread is when you're only going a thousand feet per second. I am right now this minute of the empirical belief that 25 feet per second is an inch to an inch and a quarter-ish at a hundred yards. That means it's a foot at a thousand yards. That means it's six, eight, ten inches, six ish, eight ish at six hundred yards. That means it's marginally usable. I must get the extreme spread down into the ten ish. Now comes the weird part. When I started shooting these and I wasn't getting readings on my chronograph, I was getting groups, like I have them here. Shotgun powder. The problem is it pressured out. Shotgun powder pressured out before I achieve velocity. Here's two, the two rounds that I shot, load after load. These have been, let's say these have been shot 25 times and they're both now marked tight. The reason is I'm working my way up, I'm working my way up. I got up to velocity using a shotgun powder with the 645 grain bullets, 650 grain pulled bullets. These are, I've gone, I've burned through a bag of them already doing this testing stuff because when you're starting from scratch, buddy, 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 you got to come up with some stuff and you got to map and you got it. And I don't graph stuff because I don't have to, I just write the numbers. But the point is this round right here in my buildup, I got up through the 645, I got up to pressure. I went to a 750. I'm still fine. I got up to velocity. I went up to 800. This right here now, I can't get shut with my thumb. It'll go shut. Okay, but I'm in danger of galling the bolt load. I fired them both. And at 800, well then, I decided to go for the moon, dropped the load, tried a cutting edge 1002 grain, and it rolled down the road at like 785 or something, so I dumped in some more powder. Won't tell you how much because we're not at that point as friends yet. And this time it made 980 and, nine, uh, and close to 1000. It grouped. But the cases came out like that. So that told me that that particular shotgun powder, now we're getting up into the point where somebody could lose an eye. So I'm not going to start sharing loads. I'm sharing techniques. I'm telling you how I am safe. Now the one that got me was 4895. 4895 got extremely violent up in its working range. It was spiking, but the weird thing about 4895, and I need to say this again, I might say it in a few more videos. The same amount of 4895, pushed a 750 grain bullet at 1,050. The same amount of 4895 pushed a 1,000 grain bullet at the same velocity. When you've got a powder that is so energetic that in that cramped little space, you go up from 750 to 1,000 grains, and the same amount of powder pushes a 1,000 grainer. Now, I only did it twice. So I'm not going to say this is the gospel, but I was already noticing as how 48 and 85, the harder you squeeze it, the harder it fights back. 
That's another reason I backed off on the 4895 in this. I like something that's just nice and progressive. And this stuff goes up, and as it goes up, it starts pounding and pounding. I ran, I didn't wreck these cases, but I ri did run my, actually, it's kind of confused. So far, I've managed to get all this work done with only these two cases being wrecked and these ones, I caught these ones early. I haven't wrecked them. But I pulled out. Suffice it to say, I pulled out of the 4895. Now I'm down an H322. Totally new ball game. I went to Varget, ran into some click bangs, switched to some wolf primers, got a click and no bang. So I put away those old wolf primers and I started hammering out uh, the one that had been hit already. Did that to my finger. No, I'm safe. But you saw my setup. I stick the case down on a shell holder, stick a prod in there and bash it. I don't bash, I tap it. But I did use the big. Anyway, the one that had been preset and didn't fire did go off. So, I'm not burned because of the way I was holding. I'm saying I had my rag and two flames came and, and blackened. It's not burned. There's no, but some smoke came out and blackened my finger because I was, I wasn't as safe maybe. I was as safe as I should have been, but I wasn't as well contained as I should have been. A jet of gas came off from under my rag. So, no harm done. Hearing protection and safety glasses. Now you can decap and oppress all day long and I think any normal person could do thousands of reloads and never pop one. But when you start turning even upside down, you start bashing on primers, they'll tend to go. So long story short is I went through this histrionics and it got dark on me and I figured out my thing and I'm getting readings on the lab radar. I finally on my fourth try started going back and just shooting I'm going through bullets because I'm just trying powders and primers and powders and primers finally Winchester blue box WWM's magnums LRM large rifle magnum primers seem to ignite I just settled on 322 it seems a little hot and I haven't got it up to the thousand grainers yet but in the 650 and 750 grain, it seems to be right up in the range. I'm not making excessive pressure. And I'm getting... I got a 322, I mean 902 coming down on, I'm sure, 321. 921, 950, 882, 915. 1073, about a hundred feet per second in my groups. The last one I shot I actually drew on paper. This other one right here was shaped more like it had some side in it. But four round in a long tall stack. And my little pea brain is finally starting to understand that Dude, this is a direct reflection of these. So on this one, I actually mapped as I went. And this is, there's actually a little separation here, but these came close. This is the 965 and the 991. This is the 1005. And this is the 1073. And there is a direct correlation. I think the gun's trying to shoot. But this portion has turned into a pick the powder and primer procedure. That's the part that I wanted to share and that I find interesting. Things are all progressing. I'm finding repeatable seats and you saw how I weigh my powder and how I do this. You've got to be patient to do this because it's number one, I'm like going for 35 grains and I scoop and I go and I scoop and I go and I scoop and I go. Then I have to go back and dump and check and dump and check four times just to make sure I don't go 35, 35, 38, 35 or something. Because these last two loads here are in fact, this is my out at the shooting target where I'm mapping velocities. This is inside building the loads and I went 35 grains with the Winchester 650s, 38 grains and those are directly correlated right here. 35 and 38 in my little pea brain can look similar in my mental picture. So I know I'm doing the 
the 38s and uh, I took a, a light scoop and it, it came in at 37.2 or something and I'm like, oh that one threw way heavy and I just, and I went, wait a minute, stop, 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 regroup. I'm not going for 35, I'm going for 38. So I filled it up to 38, I filled all four cases and then I stop, reset the mechanism and I go dump, way, dump, way, dump, way, dump, way. Okay, 38, 38, 38, 38, 38. And I say it almost out loud. This is this kind of stuff, people. I've turned this portion into a little bit of a safety rant because it's really easy to make mistakes. And, and in my case, I've done nothing that I would construe as dangerous. Everything I would do, I would do again. But I would warn a person that if you've got a primer that's not really compatible with, in my case this time, a thousand grain bullet and a little tiny blop of 4895 in a completely unknown case. I had a sequence where the extreme spread ran over 200 feet per second on checked loads. 200 feet per second can get a person in trouble. The only reason I'm shortcutting is because I'm working down in the thousand foot per second range. I'm working in such low pressure that this case has been fired many, many, many times. And the bulgishness on here is very apparent, but it's also very gentle. These are low pressure, super low pressure loads. Even when I run it up to where it's clapping my shoulder blades together and smashing me at 1250, I had one that was 1285 during that run. Thousand grain bullets at 1285 and a 14 pound gun hurt. Okay? But interestingly enough, if you have a 10 pound gun and you bring it up to a 15 pound gun, my children, of whom I am extremely proud and who are actual engineers, assure me that that takes the recoil factor. Adding 50% to the weight brings the recoil, felt recoil down to almost a quarter. That's interesting. So that's what this is about. This is kind of, if you don't like this kind of information, then by all means, go watch pandas fall out of trees or go watch people shoot clay birds from where, watch somebody who's, you know, more fun and more a, a something. This to me is learning the whys of how powder and primers and guns, this is like ground up, um, from the ground up, designing something that we're going to make work. When this is all said and done, I'm on this trail. And yes, I'm still shooting the 50 BMG. I'm not leaving you. I just threw this in for interest. And we got to get this thing down to single digit ES for it to be useful.